Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Empower Hour. I'm Pastor Brian with Empowered Christian Ministries. I am so excited and glad to have you with us today. So let me just briefly give you an overview of what this program is all about. The goal is to empower you. So I'm going to get out of the way. It's not about my agenda. It's about what will bless the members of our program, of our membership program. It's about what will bless the body of Christ and help to empower you so that you can live up to the full potential that God wants to have for your life. And so there's a lot of different ways you can be interactive with us. Um, We've got a live chat where you can uh, talk with the other uh, members, the other attendees who are, who are in the program with us. Um, you can ask questions there as well. You're also able to uh, put up a hand and ask a question. And I might, if uh, pr- probably want to make sure I get to know you first, make sure I have an idea of who you are. Um, but I'm happy to to let you, um, you know, unmute you and and either just let you speak and ask your question over the air, or uh, possibly even allow you to put on your video, and that way you can actually show up on the live stream and and, uh, be able to share your question. We can have a little bit more of a dialogue. That way I'm able to ask uh, some follow-up questions and maybe get in deeper. That's one of the problems with a lot of these question and answer type shows that are kind of more typical, um, usually on Facebook or YouTube Live and, and some of these kind of things where Um, or typical webinars where it's kind of more one-sided. Even when people, uh, you know, will allow you to ask a question, usually there's no follow-up. There's no, uh, well, can you kind of clarify? It would help to know, you know, are you male, female, age? How long have you been a Christian? Are you married? You know, kind of more of the background situation that will allow uh, people like me to be able to actually answer and address your concern in a more specific way, a more um, helpful way, because we're not guessing so much of the information. We're actually able to get in a little bit deeper. And so it's not quite like one-on-one pastoral counseling or life coaching, but it's it, we can get closer. It's, it's like being a part of a small group where you get the opportunity to say, here's what I'm struggling with, here's what I need help with. What do you think? And get some, uh, you know, some guidance and, and some direction. And so uh, this is, that's the goal of this program. It's to empower you so that you can get the answers to your questions so that you can get a little bit of guidance and help. And we can be here to help support you for all that God has for you. Um, For those who are not able to be here live, we also have the option within that live section in the course where you can submit a question anytime throughout the week. And so this way, even if you are not able to be here live with us at this time, which is going to be Wednesdays, uh, 530 Eastern Standard Time, then you can submit a question there in that live course uh, option. And we can read that over the air and address it over the air. And then you can watch the video later. Uh, We're going to have a separate course with all of the archives. So that way you can go in and watch all of the old episodes. You can see your question answered there, as well as learn from from what everybody else is going through. Um, Because a lot of the a lot of the time, you know, we're those of us who are helping people, we're we're saying the same thing pretty frequently. And a lot of times we can benefit from the advice given to other people and because a lot of times we're, we're walking in, in a similar uh, place. And it's also helpful to know that other people are struggling with the same things that you struggle with. They have the same doubts, the same fears, the same questions and concerns. And it's helpful to know that other people are doing that. And if you join in live and you're asking live, then you can actually connect with these people. You can go to our community section of the membership program and you can dialogue with people, follow up with them, see how they're doing, pray for one another, support one another. This is what it means to be part of the body of Christ. It means to support one another, to walk together. 
And so you should be doing this with your local church. And we provided this membership forum so that we can learn together, grow together, support one another, encourage one another, pray for one another, and learn together, grow together. And that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. We're not meant to do this on our own. So that's the goal of this of this hour um, and we're going to do something kind of similar on Fridays with our Freedom Friday program but that's going to be more deliverance focused more spiritual warfare focused um, this is going to be the program more uh, life coaching focused more discipleship focused so let's keep the questions uh, kind of more geared towards that uh, occasionally we can touch some of the other stuff but uh, let's keep it kind of focused so that way when people come here you know you know the kind of thing you're going to focus on, and, and it keeps us all focused, keeps us all uh, learning and growing in the way that we want to learn and grow. And so um, another thing I want to mention here at the outset is that I'm going to prioritize those who show up live, okay? <laughs> I, I'm going to prioritize the questions that you ask in our live chat live. Um, and also when, when I can see we have multiple attendees, I might do a survey or a poll right at the beginning of the episode and say, here's kind of a list of things we could talk about. Everybody vote and we'll focus on that this episode. And so that way, even our questions could be, okay, we want to focus on Bible questions today. We want to focus on uh, Christian living today. We want to focus on marriage today or singleness or whatever, or whatever the case may be. And I'll let you guys help direct the flow. Maybe you don't have a specific question, but a specific area of life or a specific topic, uh, broadly speaking, you're interested in. And so this way you get to control the flow of what we do. And, um, and then if you're the people who come, we're going to prioritize what you want to do first because this is what God does, right? God uh, blesses and he values those who make an effort those who strive and do what he wants them to be doing, right? The people who are willing to pay for a membership program, right? You have, that which you invest with your financial resources shows you care. That which, you know, sh just showing up and being a part of this, you're now investing your time as well. And then when you pay attention, you focus, you, you're, you're following along with the dialogue, you're exploring these things with us, you're having follow-up questions, you're going deeper, you're reading the scriptures that I'm talking about, you're studying these things, praying about them, and then coming back the next week with more questions and, and going deeper. And this shows that you care. And God wants to know, God blesses those who invest their money and their time and their emotional and mental energy. And so that's what I want to do as well, because that's who he's, God's going to work with you when you care about the things he cares about. As you invest yourself into your growth, into the things of the kingdom of God, you know, you're seeking Matthew 6, 33 says, seek first the kingdom of God in his righteousness and all of these other needs and desires that you have that are godly, that are within his will. He'll make sure you get those as well. OK, so do that first. Invest in that first. It's one of the reasons why there's a paywall here. Right. I, I knew that I could reach thousands and thousands or tens of thousands of people if I do this on a public forum for free. But I feel that my call is to help empower you, to help disciple you, to help you grow, to help to help not to give some kind of message to the hundred percent, but to really help the 10% who care get everything that they can. And so that's the goal, especially of this hour, which is about personal empowerment. It's about growth. It's about discipleship. It's about becoming all that you can be. God's goal is to make you more like Jesus in every way possible. And so that's the goal of this program. Um, and I also want to bless and, and honor those you know, it, you have to be a level three member to be here live. Um, level two members get to watch these and benefit and grow. So I do want to make that available for those of you who are not sure if, if this is the right community to be a part of. You, you know, there's a little bit more money required for level three and um, a little bit more effort and dedication that I hope that you'll be that you'll see the value of. Um, I still believe that this is I'm giving a lot of value. Um, 
people have told me I could charge a lot more for this. I wanted to make it as affordable as possible, but still um, sustainable. So that way we can continue to grow this thing. We can continue to put money into marketing and advertising and develop this and really give you everything that you need to be truly empowered. And so, uh, so I do also want to honor those who are level four and level five members. I'm going to prioritize your questions first, and I'm going to do that because you're more invested, right? Not just financially, but you know, if you only, if you only sign up and, and pay more financially, but you're not here at the live show, then I'm not going to prioritize, what you, you know, it's, so it's, it's about, it's about your personal investment. It's about, do you believe in what we're doing here at Empowered Christian Ministries? And are you trying to be a part, a part of what we're doing? Right. And if you are, then I want to honor that. I want to, I want to show you that I value you um, because I do. It's, I can't do this alone. We're just like any church. We, I can't do this alone, right? It takes the donors being able to support the work of the church. And our ministry is no different. We have some basic things that, you know, that you can pay for. You can buy books and different things, courses in the membership program or one-on-one coaching and counseling. And this helps to support our ministry. But I can't, I only have so much time and there's only so much that that's going to do. You know, we also need your donations and we need you you know, volunteering, there's options to volunteer and to serve and to, to be a moderator and to grow in these other ways. Cause I, I don't want it to be limited to us. I want to advance the kingdom of God globally. I want to have a worldwide impact. We want to change the world. We want to, we want to advance the kingdom of God in every city throughout the world. And that's going to take a huge effort. So I need you guys to get past that that any bondage that you have, let's break through to freedom. Then let's do life renovation. Let's get things fixed up at home first. Let's get things fixed up in your life first. And then let's go to empowerment. Let's mobilize you so that you are doing exactly what God wants you to be doing. And you're fully empowered. God wants to use you in a mighty way. I do believe that. I believe every one of you has tremendous potential. So that's kind of the introduction to this whole entire program. This is the first, uh, you know, the first episode, the first um, time we're doing this. So I'm giving this long intro. I'm not going to do it every week. Um, I wanted to give it this time. So without further ado, let's jump right into your guys' questions. Um, I have uh, a few that have already been preloaded. I don't see any uh, in the chat right now. So definitely load those up, get them loaded up. I want to get to it. All right. So I have one here from Sarah. And her question is, what are your top three tips for evangelizing? What are your top three tips for evangelizing? Okay. Um. That's a great question. Um, I definitely want you guys to be evangelizing. I want you guys to be a witness. It's important. God, it calls you to do it. It's a command of Christ. Go and make disciples, right? Matthew 28. Go and make disciples and teach them to obey everything I've commanded you to do. You know, that kind of touches more in the discipleship aspect. But, uh, you know, before we can make disciples, we need people to know about Jesus. We need them to know the good news, the gospel. And so uh, what are the top three tips, I would say? Um, well, first, I think it's important that you're, the reason you're um, evangelizing is, is aligned with the heart and purposes and mission of God. Let that, that, I think that's the most important thing, right? Because we've, a lot of, you know, in the book and, and in other places, I talk about like this legalism, this workspace mentality. It's so easy for us to have that. We're like, yeah, go, go, go. And I have to do work and I have to, um, I have to do all this effort. And that's so easy to do. Um, it's so easy to fall into that trap. And, and we want to be productive. We want to, we want to, you know, be productive and have an action-based 
uh, lifestyle. Um, we want to be producing good fruit, right? These are all good things. Um, and so we do need to do that. And sharing the gospel and evangelism is part of that, um, you know. But before you make all of this effort to just um, hit the streets and, and start reaching out to your neighbors and, and everybody else, um, it's, it's important that you spend time with the Lord. It's important that you um, allow your personal relationship with God to sort of be the foundation of all other evangelism work, right? It's, it's to let the gospel really hit your heart and transform you where you're just full of that gratitude. And you're like, I can't believe that God saved me, right? He, he's forgiven me of all of my sin and he wants relationship with me. And I have a new life and a new identity through Christ and I'm forgiven of all my sins. I have no reason to have any guilt for my past. I'm justified. I am born again. Um, I have new purpose in life. And to just, you know, before you go and just start telling other people, really internalize that truth. Really, because your, your witness is going to be so much more authentic and genuine and heartfelt. Right. It's not just about having the right words. It's not just about having this, you know, this little soul winning script that's 30 seconds long. I'm going to go in and, and, and throw this at 100 people every day. Right. You want people to have a genuine encounter with the living God as you're sharing the gospel with them. And so they you want them to sense the presence of God living in you. You want them to hear your excitement and your joy and, you know, to feel like, wow, this person really knows God. They really, they, there's something different about them. There's a joy in them. That's not to say you need to have everything all perfect and figured out and your life has to be, you know, you have to be this perfect Christian first, but but just have that authentic relationship with the Lord. Like let your life be transformed by the gospel first and, and then daily continue to renew that um, and just keep it strong so that when you share the gospel, it comes from this authentic place. I think that's the number one thing that's most important, um, not only in evangelism, but pretty much everything we do. Uh, so second, I would say become familiar with multiple forms of evangelism there's a lot of different ways we can share the gospel you know there's uh, we have one of our driveway discipleship lessons that gives a number of different ways there's sort of the style of of ray comfort and the guys over at living waters which is you sort of um, ask them if they're good you present the you know you ask them if they're a good person and you kind of take them through this this basic foundation of the law of god which convicts the heart shows them that they are a sinner, that they do need someone to forgive their sin, and that Jesus is the way to forgiveness and the way to eternal life. And he's the only way, right? And so that's one way. Uh, I give a handful of other options. You know, there's some great ones where you just say, you know, uh, another one I can't recall uh, who came up with that uh, Um Okay, uh, Pastor Chris over at uh, 33rd Company. He's uh, we actually have some um, ministry connections with a with a church over here in St. Pete, and uh, you know their approach is kind of just to to keep it very basic. Do you know that God created you, and created you for relationship, right? And then he, you know, as soon as depending on how they answer that, okay, then do you know the that your sin has hurt that relationship? And then you just take them into the gospel through that. God wants a relationship with you, right? And uh, and it could be as simple as that. There's other ways of doing it. There's, you know, like the Romans Road is another way of doing it. There's uh, there's a handful of, you know, there's three circles. There's, you know, these different ways of just sharing a gospel presentation within a couple of minutes, you know, two minutes tops. Um, and I think, I think when you have a handful of these tools under your belt, 
Um, you'll probably notice that there's certain ones that appeal to you more than others. Uh, I think it's good to just learn a few of them. It, it, it doesn't take long. Um, at the end of the day, you're saying God wants to know you and sin separated that and hurt that. And Jesus is the way, the way back to restoration with him. Right. And so um, having, having a couple of different um, tools in your tool belt will help you have confidence so that when you interact with people, you don't have to quickly figure out what you want to say. You already have a handful of options to choose from that are clear demonstrations. You know, they're not demonstrations. They're clear uh, um, presentations of the gospel so that way you're not fumbling and mumbling around. Um, I remember years ago, um, not too long ago, it was, about, uh, it was the year right before COVID started, and I was in Mozambique. Um, I was over there for two and a half weeks. I went to South Africa for a month on a mission trip, and uh, you know, and, and we we saw people get saved, and it was it was wonderful. But the way that they were doing it, they had like this long process. I went there with a, a seminary uh, that that's out there, and um, you know, and I so I really was sort of a guest who kind of came on through another ministry partnership. And so I didn't want to overstep my bounds and tell everybody, you know, how to do things, nor, you know, is just because I think something could be improved. Does, does that make me right necessarily anyway? Um, but one of the things that I didn't really think was the best way to go was they kind of launched into, you know, here's Genesis says this and then Adam and Eve and then the serpent and then he deceived Eve. And then this led to this. And I mean, ultimately it was a 20, 30 minute gospel presentation. That's a lot of time to ask somebody. I mean, we could, they were doing it and we're like interrupting people's work. Um, you know, they're out in the, you know, we're, we're in a society where they're all in huts and, you know, we're, we're walking down the street and there's no cars there, right? We're rural Roseanne, uh, Mozambique and so we're walking up we're interrupting a lady you know she's got her children and her they're working on a farm and we're interrupting her for 30 minutes of her day during daylight to tell her this long presentation um, I just think that's a little excessive and I think if we could get to the point sooner um, then then that's a good thing and I would say in America and other places where that are more first world it's all the more important you know people you know you can find out within a couple minutes if they are seeking God, if they're seeking truth, if they are, if they are ready and open and willing to give their life to the Lord, or at least to be a fertile soil that's ready to receive Him. And so, and they may not be, you know, ready on the spot. Praise God for when they do. But maybe they're fertile soil that is open, that they're looking for truth, that they're looking for answers, they're looking for meaning and purpose. Um, and we can find that out actually pretty quickly. And so you can test that. Now, if they start asking follow-up questions, they're really hungry, eager, and you can see the benefit of spending 10, 20, 30 minutes with them, get to know them, exchange numbers and emails, and really actually begin the discipleship process. That's great as well. Um, but sometimes we get into like these, these sort of I'm now I'm arguing with this person. We're going back and forth. They're hostile. They're really not open to what I'm saying. They kind of just want to prove me wrong or tell me why Christianity is false or why God's evil or some other argument. And that's just a distraction. We need to know um, to avoid that stuff. And so that would probably be my third tip, which is uh, quickly discern if uh, – the Holy Spirit is moving in this moment if this person's responding, right? And so sometimes another thing that will be helpful as part of that is before you even go into this evangelism and, and, and you know, whether it's with a neighbor or a stranger or um, you decide to do some door-to-door -door evangelism or, you know, open-air preaching or just go to a Walmart and start witnessing to people, however you're going to do it, um, let the Holy Spirit lead you, right? And because he'll open the doors and, sh and lead you and point you to the people who are going to be more open and receptive. And so don't walk around in Walmart for three hours waiting for the Holy Spirit to tell you something. Know that everybody needs the gospel. And even the people who are already saved, 
they might not be plugged into a church. They might not have other, you know, they might not be actively being discipled and fully living out their full potential. And so you can interact with everybody that you encounter. And then when it, when you have a few options to choose from, or if the Holy Spirit just interrupts you and says, you need to, he really starts highlighting a certain person, then trust him, go with them. But you'll know within a minute or two, this person is open and I feel the Holy Spirit putting on my conscience that they're ready, um, that they're they're at least um, fertile soil. And then you can invest that time and energy and know that it won't be fruitless. Um, you know, don't don't get into a 45 minute back and forth with somebody who is who's hostile. Present a basic, simple gospel presentation. And uh, you can know pretty quickly if a person's um, open and available. And if they are, excellent. Um, so that would be my three tips for evangelism, uh, at least off the top of my head today. So let's look at what other questions we've got. Um, I don't see any others in the chat. Uh, so everyone is being quiet today. So we are going... Um, to these other ones okay uh let's see okay uh okay so another one right in line with evangelism um i felt the call to evangelism and like global missions but i recently did a spiritual gift assessment and it rated these very low for me and i'm not sure what to think about all of this yeah, you know, you know that's tough, and you know, I. It's important to trust what God is putting on your heart personally. So, if God is, you know, as you just learn, um, you know, as as you spend time with God, as you grow your relationship with Him, and you spend time in church, and you spend time in the Word, and he's moving and he's changing and he's doing things in your life. He's conforming you into the image of Christ. Excuse me. And, and the Holy spirit is putting spiritual gifts in you. And these are primarily the spiritual gifts are not primarily for you. They're for the rest of the body there to um, either edify the church or to expand the church, right? Those are the primary two reasons why the spiritual gifts are given. Everything else kind of falls within that those categories. And so if you feel the Lord putting on your heart a love of evangelism and a love of mission and, and wanting to serve in this way, that is great. That is great. Trust that. Continue to explore it. Continue to step out of your comfort zone and challenge yourself to, um, to do more witnessing right to we are a witness and so as you grow in that um you will either continue to get confirmation from the lord that this is what he's putting on your heart he's gifting you in it he's making you good at it it's um you're feeling passionate about about it and he's and he is um opening up doors of opportunity that allow you to do more of it, to connect with other people who are good at it, you know, different ways to serve. The church has opportunities and they, and they, you know, the other people in your life, um, you know, the leadership at the church, they're all saying, you're good at this. We, you know, we want you to do it. We also confirm the call um, that God has given this to you. Um, uh, hang on one second. I see, uh, um, somebody has an issue uh, getting in. Okay. Um, yeah, one person sent a message in saying that they weren't able to get in the show. So, yeah, uh, if if you're ever having trouble getting into the program, you just go to that live course and one of – right on – I have one uh, lesson that is the link to this live show. The second lesson right underneath that is the password. And you should be, you know, and that will change um, 
so that will change. So just get the password and then we, right before you click on the link. And so that way you're always able to get into the show. And so, um, so back to our question, the, the problem with spiritual gift assessments, and I spent quite a bit of time on this in the book, um, the Empowered Christian Roadmap, and it's also in in the online course or the audio book that's also there. Um, so you guys can see this. It's in Chapter 7, which is about the church, and in Section O, which is called Spiritually Gifted Parts. And I really dive into detail on the spiritual gifts. I go into the problems with uh, some of the assessments that are out there, the spiritual gift assessments that are out there. Um, and, and I share some different ways that I interpret this, you know, like a lot of times the roles like apostle, teacher, prophet, evangelist, um, or shepherd, which is basically pastor. Um, th these are actually included as spiritual gifts, but I kind of make the case that these are actually roles, not actual gifts that are an actual empowerment of God's grace empowering us to do something, um, something unique, right? Because if you're a teacher and you have the gift uh, to, or let, let me put it this way, if you have the gift to teach, but that could help you in teaching, but it could also help you in explaining the gospel while evangelizing. And it could also help you shepherd somebody, right? Because they need, people being shepherded need to know doctrine, you need to have truth, you need to have biblical exposition same thing if you're being called to be a preacher you need to be able to teach as well and so the gift would be teaching and the role the different ways that it plays out uh it has different callings different roles within the body um so one of the um one of the things i've seen uh and i actually uh did um Actually, I'm remembering now. I actually reached out uh, to this person. I, I know them, and I and I asked him which spiritual gift assessment they took, and he told me. And so I think every assessment's different. Um, and I a future thing. Let me know uh, in the comments, in the discussions, or in the chat, uh, or later on, shoot me a message in in the community section. Let me know if this is something you guys are interested in. But I actually think I want to develop my own spiritual gift um, entire course, which includes a personal assessment. And I think I want to take five, six or more other assessments and take the best questions and really um, address the concerns as best I can anyway that I laid out in the book and in the course there in section O. Um, because some of the questions were like this um, for evangelism. I am, uh, I am very concerned with going to uh, other countries and making sure that different cultures and languages um, get the gospel. And that was like a missions question. And so if you said, well, I'm not overly concerned about that. Like, I just want to share the gospel. I'm happy to do it in my own community or, or in this in the country that I live in. Um, I don't have to go to a foreign place that speaks another language in order to do that. Um, it doesn't mean I'm not for mission. <laughs> and so if you had said no to that question or ranked it really low, then it would say you don't care about missions, right? That's not your gifting. But that's not true, right? Um, it, never mind the fact that we're all called uh, to be missional. And that's what that's you know, that's not even a gift. That's, that's another problem is missions shouldn't even be a gift. That's not a gift. That's a, that's a calling. It, it's a, it's a focus of what we do with our time. And you may right now feel called to have, to lead or help in your local church to disciple people or to help with worship or to help with a number of other things that doesn't mean you're not called to missions or that you're not gifted for missions just because you're not doing it in this season of, of your life right now. Right. You might say, I would love to do a long mission trip next year, 
or when God, you know, maybe we're expecting the birth of a kid and we, we have to wait until, you know, the, uh, you know, until the, the my wife is has already delivered, and and you know we need some other things taken care of first. Doesn't mean you're not spiritually gifted to do that. It means the season's not right, right? So we need to be very careful about the limitations of these assessments, and and just sort of factor in what they are saying, um, without um, sort of taking them as gospel truth, right? Because they have limitations. And so if the Lord's putting on your heart that you're an evangelist um, or a, and, and to do missions, to do more evangelism, continue to lean into that, lean into that and explore it. Continue to grow your actual spiritual gifts, right? Um, continue to grow your love and your compassion for sharing the gospel with people because that's God's heart. He wants people saved. He wants, he wants the kingdom of heaven full. Right. That's that's the call. And so uh, do that and never let uh, that's something we should all be doing. So <laughs> never let a spiritual gift assessment say that you shouldn't be doing that because that's just this is unbiblical. Um, this is that's one of the primary missions of the church is is to be a witness for Jesus and to grow the church and to share the gospel with people. So we're all supposed to do that first of all, um, as to whether or not you're gifted and called to it. If the Lord is impressing upon you to do it, you should continue to do it um, and take multiple. I would also recommend take multiple assessments. And so this way you can, you know, the, the limitations of, of different ones, they'll sort of uh, blend together and balance one another out. Um, and at the end of the day, um, so that will all help give you uh, direction because they'll kind of help balance one another out and also don't limit what you do with your life on the spiritual gifts alone anyway right check out the the other sections of the book i cover those in chapter eight or or in the course in in section eight um you know go through the whole entire shape not just the s which is spiritual gifts but the h your heart what does god put on your heart to do what are you passionate about what do you care about Right. Um, and the A, your abilities, your natural talents and the things that you've been you've been developing, like your natural skills, the things that you've been learning, the things you went to school for, the things your parents taught you, the things, you know, that were that were very easy growing up. Um, that's also an important. And then E, your personality type how that factors into what you do with your life. And then last but not least, um, sometimes the most important is E, your experience, your personal experiences, right? Maybe you were saved through an evangelism encounter. Maybe it was um, you were in the dark because no one ever witnessed to you and you had to stumble onto it in a very difficult way, but you were looking for answers the whole time. And you would have loved somebody coming and just sharing the gospel with you plainly. And you were waiting for it. And as soon as it happened, you thank God that they came to you. I've met a lot of people like that. And so if that's your experience, obviously that's going to shape and mold what you do with your life, with what your calling is all about. So trust all these different things and um, sort of blend them all together and keep stepping out in faith. Keep growing. Don't put all your faith on one assessment. Um, that's only going to um, depress you um, and probably mislead you. Um, okay, so let's take a look. Next. All right. I don't see any any questions in the chat. I guess you guys are enjoying this. I hope uh, I hope that the pass the password uh, issue is not uh, hurting anybody from being able to get in. Um, right. 
So here's another question that we're getting. What are the marks of a sound church? What are the marks of a sound church? That is an excellent question. Um, well, there, I cover a lot of these things in Chapter 7 of the Empowered Christian Roadmap. At least the fundamental things, I kind of organized it into... Uh, here are like the basic foundational parts of the of the uh, you know what it means to be a church and what a church should be doing, and then I have like a second section was like what what are the higher callings of a church? What are once we're covering the basics? What are some things that we should be doing? So and, and these would all be marks of a sound church of a good church. Um, first off. They are biblical, right? They're biblical. The highest authority is the Bible, right? The highest authority is not the Pope. It's not some, the founder and what they think is important and their calling and, you know, some, some prophetic insight or dream or some other thing that, you know, some spiritual gift that they have, that's not that's not nearly as important, um, you know, if at all, for that matter. Um, so the Bible is the supreme authority. The church strives to be biblical. They base what they believe and what they do and what their mission is primarily on the foundation of Scripture, God's inspired word, the Old and New Testaments. Obviously, as followers of Jesus, it's going to be more about the New Testament. But if the church does not um, understand and also teach from the Old Testament and show how it points forward to Jesus, that's a major red flag. So they have to be biblical. Uh, I would say they need to be spirit-filled, spirit-filled. And, you know, especially um, these days, there's a lot of different opinions as to what exactly that means. And so I do want to clarify, by spirit-filled, I don't mean that they have a three-hour worship service where everyone sits around quietly praying in tongues, or loudly praying in tongues for that matter, or that they get very emotional in their worship service. What I mean is that the leadership, the senior pastor and the rest of the leadership, the elders, as well as the people in the church, the you know, the collective body, value the presence of the Holy Spirit. They are they seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit. They seek to be led by the Holy Spirit. They seek to um, bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, right? The the fruit, the natural characteristics and the attributes of the Holy Spirit. They want to live that out, right? Um, you know that's super important, and and so and that could happen in a very loud, expressive, extremely charismatic church, or it could be, um, you know, and, or it could be even in a a softer, quieter, um, you know, a church that has uh, more of a cessationist um, theology to it. Um, you know, you know, our ministry we're charismatic. I consider myself cautiously charismatic. When you study all the errors of the word of faith movement, which I do. And I document a lot of those in chapter four of the book. Um, when you study the, the problems and all of the abuses, you, you see the benefit of being cautious in your uh, uh, charism. Um, but the main thing is that we're being led by the Holy Spirit. 
and this doesn't necessarily mean that you're uh that you are hearing from him explicitly like go this way go that way do this do that um i've met people who claim to hear from god all the time even audibly and their life is a, is a wreck um you know they've got demons they've got bad doctrine they've got sinful behaviors in their life and then i know people who who don't feel like they hear from god like that but you can tell by their life by their faith by their heart by their emotional state um that they have a close relationship with the lord that they're actually full of his presence um and so i, th I think we need to understand that there's more nuance to this but when you go into a church do you sense their love do you sense faith? Do you sense uh, a gracious environment or are they very harsh and judgmental and condemning? Do you sense um, people quick to forgive? Do you sense people who are humble? Do you sense people who, um, who love the Lord and who are passionate about what he's doing in the world and, you know, and what he's doing in each one of our lives individually? So these are some very important things. Um, are they biblical? Are they full? Are they spirit led? Um, you know, and, and that'll play, you know, that'll, those two things have like an outward effect with, okay, what kind of programs do they focus on? What kind of songs do they like to worship to? What kind of, um, what are the sermons like? And, you know, do they have a small group program? And, you know, what are the local missions and, and activities looking like? And all that kind of stuff. And that will help point you to if this is a healthy uh biblical godly church full of people who care more about what god thinks and what god wants to do than about their own personal agenda and their own ideas so that would be a couple of things to look for um, when looking for a new church so let's see what else we've got we have probably enough time for one more question today. Okay. Um, All right. So in the future, make sure you guys get me these questions right away. <laughs> I'd rather have more questions um, than than not. Um, you know, and if any extras, I will prioritize those uh, next week and get them into the rotation quicker. So, um, you know, preload them, you know, ask more than one. If you need to, I'll make an archive and, um, you know, it also lets, I just want to know what you guys are struggling with, what you're thinking about, uh, you know, I want to help empower you. So I can come up with all kinds of stuff. I've got an archive of hundreds of things that I could talk about, but, you know, ultimately, um, I don't want to guess. I don't want to guess as to the kinds, you know, when it comes to what I think is more important, I'll make official courses for that. I want this uh, program and the Freedom Fridays program to be for you guys. I want, this is an opportunity for me to serve you in a more direct way. Okay. So, all right. Next question. Um, how can I better manage my emotions? I feel like the enemy is always getting away with making me feel depression or anxiety or some other bad emotion. How can I learn how to manage those emotions? That is a great question. Um, our emotions, our emotions are such a, they're such an important part of what it means to be human. 
Um, you know, God made us as emotional beings. And we we don't want to just deny our emotions. We we need to learn how to control them. Right? We need to learn how to recognize what is sinful, what is that that sin nature part of us trying to encourage us to desire to want to do. And we need to learn how to crucify that desire. We need to learn how to say, okay, that thing that I sense, that's not God's will, and I need to deny it. So that's part of it. I need to deny the sinful desires of the flesh. Um, And that would include uh, the thoughts, the beliefs, the desires, the motivations. And then there's also the enemy. Our enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Scripture says Satan's like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. It also says he's throwing arrows at us, fiery arrows. And so we need to learn how to strike these things down. I cover this a bit um, in chapter four of the Empowered Christian Roadmap, which is about controlling your thoughts and and emotions and and then ultimately your behaviors and a few of the ways to do that. Um, I also covered quite a bit in our driveway discipleship program. And so as that gets built out, more and more lessons will be added this year. Um, ultimately, a, a lot of them. I, I plan to have an entire year's worth of daily lessons. So, but kind of an overview is how can I learn how to manage this? First, recognize recognize what God wants you to be focusing on. Recognize what God wants you to be focusing on. So what does God want me to be thinking about? What does God want me to be feeling? What does God want me to be embracing as my identity? Paul says, think about these things, right? Whatever is good, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is godly. I'm sort of paraphrasing, but basically whatever is fruitful, whatever is good, whatever glorifies God, whatever makes you more like Jesus, focus on these things. And so the first step into controlling our emotions is recognize what is definitely not from God, right? We talked earlier about the the fruit of the spirit and what that looks like. And so, you know, Google it. Um, it looks like my um, – so, and this is – so I'm going to read this. I'm going to use the – let's see. We'll use the Berean um, – let me use the Berean Study Bible. I'm a fan of this Bible. It's the one I use in um, in the Empowered Christian Roadmap. But all the rest, the others are, are pretty close. And the way they put it, this is Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and, self, and self-control. So that's the fruit of the Spirit. God's what he is reminding you about and putting in your thoughts and putting in your emotions, they're going to be in line with his will and his character and his nature. And so this is the fruit of that. It doesn't mean he won't have you focusing on evangelism or mission or family or whatever else, but the way that he does it, it will be focused on these things. Depression is not when God gives you joy or in peace then you know depression is not in line with God's will. It's not in line with his character. And so that's an area where you're focusing on something that doesn't come from him. So depression is, it's a feeling. And same thing with anxiety. These are feelings, but they're not, you know, feelings. We we have to, we we can't just think depression, anxiety as like this blanket thing. We need to get, uh, we need to examine it and make it and break it down into pieces. Okay. So if I feel depressed, what does that mean? I feel down. I've low, I physically have a lowered heart rate and everything else. Um, I feel low energy. I feel um, 
and anxiety would be the opposite. I have high energy. I have high, um, you know, I feel like my blood pressure is raising. I feel anxious. I feel um, nervous. I feel, um, you know, jittery. And so both of these things are a physical response. And so you can obviously do something to fight that in your physical response. If you feel anxious, you know, anxiety in your body, there's things you could do. You could go for a walk. You can pray. You can listen to relaxing uh, music. You could worship. You could, you know, you, you can go to the gym and exercise. And that will physically, that will help the physical part of this equation, right? And if you feel depressed, you can go for a walk. You can energize yourself. You can, you can do some worship, put on a good song and, and, you know, really sing to the Lord and get some energy going, fight it, fight it. Don't go along with it if it's not from God. Um, so that's the physical part of this. You can control your thoughts and your, um, and what you can control the thoughts that you're focusing on and your phys and your response. But if you don't control the body, you're still going to be feeling it on some level. So, and then you also need to control the thoughts, right? So if it's sinful, crucify it. If it's sinful, if it's from the flesh, if it's from your own self, crucify it. If it's a memory about somebody hurting you, you, you need to learn how to control that. You need to learn how to give it to God. You have to learn how to forgive them. You have to learn how to focus on uh, gratitude. That's another thing I talk about in chapter four and focus on being a, more of an optimist rather than focusing on pessimism and what is broken. You have to learn how to remind yourself to think like a conqueror through Christ and not like the victim that you felt at some point. And, you know, and then so there's this, we have to learn how to control these thoughts. You have to learn, you know, I also talk in the, in chapter four of, of the Empire Christian Roadmap that you can use biblical declarations, right? When you feel this, you fight back. God's word says this, I believe in that. I'm going to ground myself in that, right? And this isn't, it's not mind over matter. It's not positive confession stuff, like word of faith stuff. Um, it's about, it's about trusting in the gospel and in the presence and power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Holy Spirit lives in you. He is empowering you to victory. Jesus has purchased everything you need for victory on the cross, and he will give that to you. And so you can, you can embrace those gospel truths and allow them to affect your mind and your emotions and your body and continue to walk in that. So that's a few of the ways that you can learn how to better control your emotions, uh, which is such an important thing. We all need to be doing a better job at that. But it's like any other habit. You have to develop it. You have to learn how to discipline yourself to do this. But I trust you, over time, it will become second nature. I no longer have to tell myself to do these things a lot. It's second nature. It's just like brushing your teeth before you go to bed right or making your bed before, when you wake up if you do it every day you'll just do it and it'll become a habit and then that you know you you can have good habits that are not only good but also godly habits so god wants you to do this this is part of what it means to walk in step with the spirit because he's wanting he's already going in this direction he wants you to go with him learn to crucify the flesh and to rebuke and renounce the satanic attacks from the outside and start walking in step with him. All right. So that is the empower hour for today. Um, thank you guys to everybody who joined. Um, I hope we will get more and more every single week to join. Um, let me know if you have any issues getting into the live stream. Um, definitely think of questions front load them, send them to me. You can also uh, come, like I said before, I'm going to prioritize those who show up and who are part of the program. And so um, it was a blessing having you guys here with me. Um, a copy of this will go into the archive course as well so that you can watch it again later um, and share it with others. So until next week, um, we'll see you. Have a blessed and empowered rest of your week. 
go and mobilize the kingdom of God around you. And if we all do this together and we continue to work and expand outward, we can help rev create revival throughout the rest of the world. All right, go in peace. God bless you. And I'll see you next week.